All right, so today we're going to be doing the best decks tier list. I figured it's only suitable with NAWCQ and Euros concluding. And right now we can really see what kind of format we are in. So make sure to share all your thoughts when you're done watching the tier list to let me know if you agree or disagree with my placements. And also if there's any deck that I maybe didn't include on here, I will happily share my thoughts in the comments down below if you ask me where I would rank it. And I also wanted to... Um, Thank you guys, actually, because I managed to get in the top 3.9% of all OnlyFans creators and I was actually able to quit my job, which was a shitty job. <laughs> it was a kind of a lame, horrible job and uh, I was able to quit it and it's all thanks to you guys. So I just really wanted to make this announcement to say thank you and to really, um, you know, let you know of all my gratitude. So yeah, I appreciate all of your support on there as well as here on the channel of course so i appreciate you and i, I wanted you to know that and uh, yeah with that we're gonna get started with the tier list so first we have the usual tiers but we have like a bit more decks i added a bit more because some of them topped at these bigger events so i wanted to talk about them first we have altergeist which as far as i know didn't top anything so i'm still gonna put it in naga right now some people talk about a support that altergeist is supposed to be getting which is great for them, but I don't, um, you know, right now I don't see it as as a good deck. There's better uh, trap decks, and yeah, it's just it doesn't seem as great. All right, so this next icon is supposed to represent this pile that I started to see um, actually on the DB Grinder channel and like probably somewhere else as well. But it's just this synchro branded assault synchron thing <laughs> where Bishios. And I just don't, I don't completely understand it yet. I'll put it at like the top of Rogue probably because it hasn't exactly seen any success. It seems fairly new or to me at least. And it's just kind of weird because it's combining good aspects of branded and not using brand diffusion and then having all the bestios and then doing synchro stuff. It's just kind of odd. I'm not against it, but I really want to see. I want to see some some representation at at events or something. Granted, right now we won't really be having any events. So yeah, as far as right now, probably top of rogue might be like bottom of tier two if it proves itself to be like a very decent deck. But for the most part, it's just ending on like beast, a cup of bestio, and then like a grangignol. It's just I don't know. I it, to me, it's just kind of weird at this point. So. We'll see what happens in the future. And then we have Blackwing. So every single time, you know, I'll say Blackwing is top of Rogue. It is so good. If you don't really know what to do against it, they are going to completely annihilate you, I think. And um, yeah, I think Blackwing just deserves respect. It's, it's a very decent Rogue deck. Still Rogue, but decent. Uh, then we have Branded. So I think Branded has to go in tier 1.5. Mm. It's very interesting because it actually had quite a high representation at NAWCQ compar compared to Euros, it actually didn't. But I've seen very interesting branded builds. There are versions with Synchros as well, not the, the hardcore Synchro pile I talked about before, but like the branded Etude versions, there is 50 card versions, maximum stuff. You know, I've really liked one of the 50 card topping lists from Euros with just very much turbo branded stuff, zero bricks, Allure, all of that. So I think branded has so much room to evolve and I don't think it's necessarily a deck that loses to Ash. I think with all of the support and different avenues of play that opened up, I think Brandon can do a lot, even if you get Ashed. So I think tier 1.5 is like the fair tier for it. Might even be tier 1, but still has some inherent issues. So to me, it's top of tier 1.5. Maybe I'll change my mind, but Dragons 100,000% have to go in tier 1. They have been popping up lately, like they are everywhere and they're seeing success and the, the deck is just so cool honestly what i love about dragons is the fact that it can be this explosive deck but it can also play a grind game and i really appreciate it when it comes to this deck that you can just take it slow you know build a semi-formidable board but still most definitely survive and have a lot of follow-up and then be able to grind it out and win and i think the deck is in a very good spot right now it has nice matchups across the board and most definitely deserving to be in tier one then we have dark road <sighs> i just look i'll be frank with you i have seen dark world a lot i think it was the euro stream because they kept featuring uh 
just this one Dark World player in the playoffs. I'll put it in tier two. I think that that can do a lot. And I already said it in the event recap, that person really showed what the deck is able to do. And it made me appreciate the deck a bit more. I still don't really like it. It just, uh. but uh, you know, tier two, I think is suitable for it. It's fine. It does a lot, puts up a lot of bodies. Still loses to draw quite hardcore, but um, yeah, I guess, I mean, tier two. Um, and I also like, I like the fact that you can uh, put you can put cards in the deck that are like good when you draw them, even if you're going second because they are board breakers or cards like I don't know that just deal with the board. Um, so I I really like this. You know that you actually get to draw in non engine that's going to help you break the board. I think that's cool. So yeah. Then we have Dino. I'll put it in Rogue. I think it has potential, but nobody really picks it up to for us to see what it. it can do so i guess we're just gonna have to wait but it is a fine rogue deck i think all right anamorphia not good right now in my opinion i'll put it above uh, ultra guys and it tops here and there but it does seem like the deck for locals right and i'm not trying to be like disrespectful when i say it but to me it just seems like you know it's fine for locals but on a higher scale i don't think it's that great a Jacob Slayer has an inherent issue with going second, like all Pendulum decks do, you need to play a ton of engine, and also with Kashira, like, if you go into game 2 and 3 and then they lock your zones, it's kind of cringe, so I just, you know, Rogue is fine, I think. Then we have Drychon. I think Drychon is... Mm, oh my god, I don't know, like, maybe if I put this in tier 2, then I, I should put the, the other deck in tier 2 as well, like this one. Ah, no, I'm indecisive. Um, I think I'll put Tritron lower, just because it doesn't see any success anywhere. And also with dragons becoming more and more popular, more bestials are in the meta, so Jaichons are um, consequentially just going to fall off, I think, for the time being at least. Yeah, I think this is fine. And then we have... Oh my god, can you hear my stomach growling? I haven't... I've only drank like a smoothie at this point. And then I wanted to go record, so <laughs> I'm really sorry, but I have to go cook dinner. So yeah, uh, then we have um, the Earth Machine deck. Now this one, I wanted to feature it because it managed to get to top, I think it was top 16 at Euros, if I'm not mistaken, actually. I think the deck is not in a weird place. It's actually, because it's always in a weird place, but right now I feel like it's kind of, okay you know you can play a lot of your big earth machine stuff and you can play like floodgates so you you're good going second as well so i think it's fair to put it in tier two because of the success that it saw recently and yeah i think i'll just leave it here because of euros and um, maybe it's going to go down later or i might be completely wrong and the deck is just not that great and the person had a good run i'm not entirely certain because i feel like this deck is like it's not bad but it doesn't do as much as the other decks, so it's always going to be like some type of rogue deck, but um, I don't know. I think I'll leave it like bottom of tier two or something. I'll decide later. All right, so this one is Live Twin Sprite. Without Runic, I wanted to include it just to put it here and to say that in my opinion, you probably have to play Runic because it just gives so much to the deck, but some people choose to play without it. That's also a budget option, so I definitely wanted to include it and put it in tier two, but in my opinion, Runic is the way to go. Then we have Outlitch. I don't know. I think Outlitch is always going to be rogue. Like, I could... Mm, I'm going to put it here. Honestly, just I don't feel like you should be playing trap decks at this point in time unless you're playing Labyrinth. There's a lot of blowout cards going second. I just don't... I don't think it's that great. Many people main deck Harpies at this point. A lot of people play Cosmic as well because of Runic. And it's just lightning storm even because thrust is everywhere and harpies and lightning storm are really good targets so in my opinion it's not the correct time for trap decks as if it's ever a very correct time for trap decks i'm not sure but labyrinth sure these ones mm, not so much then we have exosister now this one is like the topic of debate right did the person just have a really good run at the remote ycs and also at the nawc cube like playoffs or is the deck really good? Or is just he really good? And in my opinion, I think it was the correct meta call to play. Mainly for uh, the Ramodo YCS. It's kind of like an unexpected deck. It banishes a lot, which is great. And uh, 
it's also able to OTK quite easily and play a bunch of non-engine as well. Shifter is really nice. You can even play cards like Necro Valley if you want in like a side deck or something. I'm not sure if you would want to do that, just a random thing. But yeah, for the most part, this deck is not a bad meta call. I don't think the deck itself is that great. I never thought that, but I guess I could put it in like tier two next to Dark World maybe. Because I do think that you need to be good if you want to play it like well and actually go up against some of the top decks. But for the most part, it was just the correct meta call for that particular event, like the playoffs, for example. Because the, since the pool is really small, you kind of know what your opponents are going to be on. So yeah. Then we have Flunder. I think Flunder has to go in tier two, like top of tier two, maybe arguably even bottom of tier one because it is seeing tops. It has some representation. Shifter is still here. Basically, Flunder has been doing the same thing this entire time, and right now, it's the meta for it again. It kind of fell off a bit, then it picked up traction again, but I don't know, like, um, in my opinion, like, when you lose to Flunder, it's usually because they just have too much, like, sometimes they just have a really good hand, and there's nothing you can do about it, but for the most part, there are cards to counter it, so I think it's fair to put it in tier 2 and not higher, but uh, people still manage to squeeze in, like, tops, of course. Uh, then we have Gold Pride Punk. So, this deck, in my opinion, is, like, um, a solid tier 2 contender. Because like it's always seeing some kind of some kind of representation. Not many tops though. So that's there as a fact. Do with that what you will. But I think that it's just it doesn't do enough. It's not. It's a very very nice mid range deck, but it doesn't do enough compared to some of the other ones. So it's always going to come up short. So yeah, I, I guess tier two is fine for it. And then we have hero. So. If we put, he like, Earth Machine up here, then we kind of have to put Hero up here as well. But I feel like I'm a bit too lenient with this with this tier list. So um, I'm not sure what to do. But Hero is, like, it's not in a bad spot at all. You have Enforcer, you have Plasma, like you see here on the icon. Dark Angel, of course. Um, Dark Claw, oh my god. Dark Claw is amazing. And just overall, the deck is nice going second. It's nice going first. It's... It's fine, right? So probably it is suitable to put it in tier 2. Mm, I guess over here is fine. Man, like it's weird. This tier list is weird. Alright, so I wanted to include Invoked because some people were starting to like pick up Invoked together with I guess some Shalal stuff and then also Cartesia and Quen because of the duality, I think? Or Shadow Light or both. I haven't looked into those decks that much. But to me, it still just seems just rogue. I'll just, I'll put it here. I think those decks always have some kind of potential, but it reminds me of, like I said, with Dynamorphia, it's like a local type of deck, right? At, at, at the local level, I think you can do well, but at bigger events, I'm not so sure. Then we have Kashira. We have to put it in tier one. The representation speaks for itself. 30% representation or 33 or something at uh, at NAWCQ and Euros actually, about 10 to 11 people always top, so it's saying something. Like, well, I've talked about Kashira a bunch in, in recent weeks with all the tops and the win of course at NAWCQ, second place at Euros, so it's just a very solid deck. The unicorn hit was just so we can pass the time until it really gets hit severely in the fall, at least in my opinion, so the deck is still on top 100%. I don't think it's goaded. I don't think any deck is goaded right now. Tier was goaded. If you cannot compare it to tier, I don't think you should put anything in goaded. I mean, I should. It is my tier list. <laughs> but you know. Uh, then we have Labyrinth. I guess I'll put it in tier... Ooh, I'll put it in tier 1.5. I think Labyrinth is still fine. I don't know. Like The issue with Labyrinth is runic cards, most definitely. And Runic kind of is everywhere right now, so it might actually be just a tiny bit lower, but still, if you look at the charts, it's always like Kashira Sprite branded, Dragons, and Labyrinth makes it to a percentage. And then Flunder as well. So I think it's fair to put it here. You still have the furniture build. You can play the like just heavy trap build with um, Lord, of the, Lord of the Heavenly Prison as well. So yeah, I think tier 1.5 is fine. Then we have Manadium. So... Monodium is really interesting because Monodium can also be paired up together with Super Heavy Samurai. So these two decks are sort of like a mashup, but you don't need to play the Super Heavy Samurai cards. So I'll just, you know, I'll 
compare them like separately, I guess, on this tier list. But just so you know, this is something you can you can mash up together. But I'll talk about it later when we get to the super heavy samurai. So I think Monadium is like tier two. I will put it like maybe here next to Exosister because it's still kind of fragile and without the support I don't think it's exactly at the level it could be and it will be once the support drops so without the support I think it's fair to put it here Exosister might be a tiny bit overrated I don't know I'll put it a bit lower I'm not not a fan um so yeah Monodium definitely a deck to look out for I think you need to be skilled to play at 12 from what I've seen and it's interesting has all the synchro stuff it's cool it's basically the other version of super heavy samurai essentially but yeah I I think it's nice but it's not that great right now then we have Marintzes um I don't know Marintzes is kind of like uh, <laughs> I'll put Earth Machine in Rogue. I don't even, like, no, I can't. I cannot have an Earth Machine up here. I wouldn't feel that great about myself if I did that. Uh, I'll put Marinces here, though, because it still has so much space to, pl to play all the tech cards you want, pretty much. For the most part, you play hand traps, so it's much better in a hand trap heavy format, but you can still play a lot of different cards. You see, it's like that. I don't think Marinces is that great as a deck itself, it can be outed way too easily. If they go for a super polyable board and you super poly them, it's just horrible. There's nothing they can do about it. But the trap card is still really strong and sometimes you just cannot deal with the link and then all the attack it has and all the equips. The fuel spell is really nice. But I think you just have to hand trap Marinces in the correct point in time. Like on the effect of the, I think it is the link one that gets to the spell trap. The fuel spell pretty, pretty much is like usually the, what they search. Uh, but we're, because we're not in a very handship heavy format, you kind of have to deal with the board once they build it. And at that point, it's a bit harder to deal with it because of all the hand traps and the trap card and everything else. So yeah, and they can play like a floodgate, I assume as well. So yeah, I think it's fair to put it here. Not that great, but still not something to just write off. And then we have Mathmech. Mm, I'll put Mathmech in Rogue. I don't even like, eh, it, it managed to get second place at the Remodo YCS. But for the most part, probably that was like surprise factor mashed up together with the fact that the person had a really good run because kind of with, with a deck that's hit, you need to have a good run. Like you, you need to, because it is, consistency is severely hindered. So in my opinion, it's still like rogue. And once it sees more tops, I will happily give it the flowers it deserves. But for right now, I don't think it does. And then we have Mikanko. This one is rogue as well. I wanted to include it because it's like seeing um, success here and there. But again, it's like just one of those rogue decks that is not able to hang with the best of them, at least in my opinion. I can put it like here, maybe. Sometimes you'll see people do well with it. I've, I think I've seen like um, at least one top of Mikanko, just pure. Some people play it with Libromancer as well. So yeah, interesting deck, but not that great. Naturia Runic as well. I don't think it's like, mm, I don't know. I will like maybe even put this in not good right now. This is like rogue, I guess. Yeah, Naturia Runic is not good right now, in my opinion, because like it can do what Naturia Runic was doing, but you know, the Sacred Chi hit really hindered the deck. And right now, if you want to play something with Runic, there is so many options for you that people just will not choose Naturia. Plunder, for example, this is literally an option with Runic. I think Plunder has to go in tier 2. Like maybe here. Plunder with uh, Runic and Adventure and all of that. I think it's not a bad deck, but mm, actually think. Let me think, let me think. I will put it top of Rogue. Yeah, I'll put it top of Rogue because it doesn't really see tops. I just think it has potential, but maybe people just don't lean towards it because you can just choose the for higher deck, which is much better than Plunder if you want to play Runic. So it's really up to you. Then we have Pearly. So Pearly is very surprising because it saw success at both Europe, Euros and NAWCQ as well. And it's just so nice because it has a ton of space. And if you saw 
different pearly lists, you can pretty much play whatever you want. You know, there's Book of Moon, there's Thrust, there's Impermanence, there's other hand traps. You can play so many different versions of the deck and it really depends on what you want to do and it's a hard deck to play. So it rewards good gameplay. It's very nice going first, sorry, very nice going second, I wanted to say, but in my mind, I also wanted to say that it's not bad going first, so it's Ugh, I just mashed everything up, but the point I, tr I tried to make is it is very good going second. I wouldn't necessarily think it's like a deck that you have to go second with because going first you can still establish enough to the point where you survive and you know with the likes of Book of Moon and the hand traps and if you manage to get to the, uh, the big XYZ, that's also great. Uh, it did get hit of course and the delicious hit hurt the deck 100% but it is receiving support as well and I think like I said the going second is really nice and it saw success so I think it's fair to put it in tier 1.5 it has a ton of potential and I just think that I think the player needs to be really good with it and the support is going to make it even better so I will leave it here because Labyrinth just sees a bit more tops and has seen them recently but I think Pearly is definitely a deck to look out for as well as Rika so I'll put Rika here it's kind of weird and I've talked about it in my I think I uh, it was in the five best decks right now video I mentioned that Rika is like the lowest one on the list because for the most part what really makes the Rika deck is the player there is a lot of decision making in in the deck and you kind of have to you just have to be really good with it i don't think you can just pick up rika and think you're gonna do well because the deck would carry you it's quite the opposite and i think the your deck building has to be good and uh, yeah definitely your decision making so it's not the easiest deck to play and it has some struggles with trap decks for the most part but it did win euros so yeah moving on to for higher sprite like i mentioned already i think it has to be tier one I will put it like here and then we have the other sprite variants. So let's talk about all of them. We have this, we have this, we have the Melfi sprite. So all of this has to go in tier one, at least in my opinion. This one might be a tiny bit better because for higher struggles with a couple of things, but like for the most part, the builds are quite similar when you look at the amount of cards you can play for non-engine. And um, Life Twin just has a bit of an easier time to get started because you have a bunch of starters, but I don't know, like, I think that Sprite overall is a nice deck, but it's like it has some weird matchups against a couple a couple other decks. So it is not a deck that you would just pick up. Like I said, when it comes to Rika, it's not a deck you're gonna pick up and it's gonna carry you. I still think you need to play it well. Granted, it's not as skillful as like Rika, for example, but um I do think you need to you need to be a good like player of mid-range decks to really shine with sprite in my opinion so i think i'll put this one like maybe lower than branded and these two can stay over here because like i said branded has some inherent issues so yeah in my opinion i think this placement this arrangement is fine and talking about a couple of the other sprite decks so i'll put this one in rogue because literally no one is playing it and i don't even know why it's still on the tier list i don't think it's bad it's just that people don't really aren't really picking it up and then we have the Gishki version, which I wanted to include because a person topped with it. But I don't think the Gishki engine is good. I think it's kind of weird because it's a very big engine and I'm happy for, for the player that did well. But I don't think it's, I don't think the deck is good itself. So I will leave it here, like next to the other variant, but I did want to touch upon that. And then we have Scareclaw. I'll put this in Rogue as well. I don't think Scareclaw is that great. Uh, it's not bad actually why is blackwing so low i think i have an issue with that i'll put it higher <laughs> so yeah and dino as well oh my god i really dislike my rogue uh, tier right now i think i'll do it like this so scareclaw is kind of in a weird spot because for the most part you're just gonna include the scareclaw engine in like monodium or the super heavy samurai version so like as a deck itself i don't think it's that great so it's much much better as an engine but i did want to include it just to emphasize this and then we get to the super heavy samurai so if you've seen the wild water jewel directed deck profile which i just cannot even comprehend it's a super heavy samurai build with scareclaw kashira and manadium so I think this one has to be like top of top of Rogue because of course it is a topping deck profile. I think they made it to top 32 in uh, NAWCQ if I'm not mistaken. But I still think that, you know, the, the deck has some issues. It's a bit 
fragile. It can still play through stuff, but um, it's kind of like, it's kind of weird. And I, I am hyped for it, but because it only saw that one top, as far as I know, I'm going to place it here for the time being. And I really want to see if people evolve more with Super Heavy Samurai, because you have the Monodium versions with like Scareclaw cards, Kashira cards probably, and, but the Super Heavy Samurai edition is just a separate deck in itself. So I'll leave it here and we'll see what happens. And then we have Sky Strikers. So... Sky Striker is so weird because it, it is an engine in Sprite at this point, so not a deck by itself. And it doesn't really see any kind of success, which just makes me sad. As far as I know, I don't think you know Sky Striker saw any any tops. But it doesn't seem like it like it lacks potential, right? Be and that's just what kind of confuses me because I think it has potential, but it just doesn't do that well. And I guess the issue is just that the other decks are they're just played more, people don't gravitate towards Sky Striker that much, and um, yeah, I think the difference can be seen with what the power level used to be uh, when Sky Striker was at the top and what the meta is right now. So I'll leave it in tier 2, it just kind of saddens me to put it lower, but I might be too biased, so I will leave it here. I just, uh, I don't know, it's, kind of, it's so weird because it's not bad and Thrust is amazing. It's an amazing card in the deck and I just, I really want Sky Striker to do well. Oh man, I have to put it lower. I'm sorry. I cannot, I cannot, you know, misrepresent things. So I'll leave it here. Might be a weird placement. I'll put Earth Machine a bit higher and I guess I can put Plunder a bit lower. I can do it like this, okay? Hope, 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 hope you guys are happy with this because I just, I really hate that Sky Striker is not doing well. And then we have Sword, so I don't know, like the Forever Rogue deck, I think at this point in time, it's just not that great. It doesn't do enough. It's way too fair. And um, yeah, doesn't doesn't see any any kind of success either. I think, it was there like a Sword so tiny? Might have been on stream. Oh, right. The Sword Sotini on stream is the one, the person that won with Second Gun Punisher with like 200 life points left or something. But still, the deck itself is way too fair. So, in my opinion, it's not that great. Now, tier. This one I was really excited to talk about. I will put it in tier two. I think it has to go over here. I think it has like a ton of potential. And I'm so hyped to see the different builds. There is builds which like should all stuff the King of the Swamp. You have, uh, of course, the Ishizu cards. And um, there's even like versions with like main deck Shadow Fusion. And um, there's a lot, I think, that you can do with Tier. And I featured the deck list on the event recap video. So I think Tier is cool. I think it has a lot of potential. And it's such a cheap engine to pick up at this point. I'm, I don't know if, if the field spells are expensive, but I don't think they are. Plus, they are probably getting a reprint very soon. So I think it's like so cool that the engine is cheap to pick up, but it's such a cool and I guess monumental deck, you know, for the history of the meta. So I really like the fact that it, it is still seeing some type of success. So it makes me happy to see, and I think it's cool that we can place it in tier two. Then we have Chap Tricks. I think this deck is not bad at all. It has monster presence as well as Chap cards. So I think it's fair to put it like uh, here, maybe. It's it's a very decent trap deck. I kind of bash the other trap decks down here, but I think this one is fine. Uh, then we have... Oh my god, I kind of just... Mm, I'm still so indecisive when it comes to the super heavy samurai deck. And then Marine says is here and it's kind of... I'll just leave it. I'll leave it the way it is and just be done with it. <laughs> and then we have Anchor Soul. Another weird deck in the meta. Like one of those decks where it just seems so cool, but then you start to play it and it kind of seems like it doesn't do enough. So... I think I'll put Vanquish Soul because it, it does see some tops occasionally. I think I'll put it like maybe here. I think this is like the correct placement for it. All of these decks in tier two, arguably some of these ones are rogue, but we do have a lot of diversity. And I think this tier list is kind of showing it. I am satisfied with it. So yeah, make sure to share all of your thoughts as well. If you agree or disagree with some of my placements and let me know like, uh, educate me on the likes of the Assault Synchron branded deck and these kinds of things. Like, I think I'll, uh, I'll just make a couple more changes and then I'm, I'm done 100%. So yeah, I think this is fine. But yeah, tell me about this deck. I think it's very interesting. And um, I guess we can like put Sword so a tiny bit lower. 
Mathmec maybe higher? Sorcerer is just so weird. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll put it like this, maybe. And I could put this deck higher. And then we can switch this out. Okay, now I think I'm done. Now I'm done. I'm so sorry if this took too long. If you are still here, I appreciate you so much. And uh, yeah, just share your thoughts. I'm done messing with this. So I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye.